Hello everyone, uh, I wanted to make a video uh, showing my NASA Control T580P Plus. Um, you know, getting rid of all the stock electronics, switching up to higher quality stuff. Um, I want to show you how it's set up in here. I have it all set up running on stock motors, stock props. Um, only thing I'm, that's the only thing I'm using um, from the original manufacturer. I'm using the motors, props, and the frame. Uh, everything else is aftermarket, um, and I'm all actually I'm also using the wiring too. I'll show you how that's done, because uh, these run through the booms here, and I didn't want to have to run you know eight inches of uh, new wiring and a new setup. I still wanted to have the original capability to where if I needed to I can collapse it down, uh, put it in a backpack or whatever. Um, so I kept all that in here. Um, didn't have to buy anything extra. I used everything I had on hand. Uh, and everything works good, so uh, I'm gonna remove the dome here and show you exactly what's going on underneath the hood here. So take that off. See, I got the um, GPS unit here. Um, everything's probably looks pretty crammed in there, um, but it's it's uh, doing all right. So um, first thing I'll go over here's my receiver. Obviously, um, this receiver for the uh, TH9X is kind of big so that's really the only place I have for it um, is there so let me move that out of the way um, the brain the NASA brain uh, controller flight controller I have mounted on the existing um, vibration dampening mounts where the original um, flight control was mounted see so I have that here this was originally mounted um, like this on the mount there but um, obviously I'm not using that no more so, um, I wanted to keep the center of gravity, everything central like it was. Um, I didn't want to mount it down here or anywhere else, so I kept that on the um, thing. All that is a piece of cardboard I traced out from the original flight control. Um, and then put holes through there, re put the uh, rubber mounts in there, and that's working good. And just double side taped it down. Make sure everything's lined up, facing forward correctly. Um, the next thing I did is mount ESCs. I put them um, on each uh, each edge of the frame here. As you can see, there's one below. This would be, um, I think this is motor three, motor four. But um, you get the point. They got a, they're all spaced out evenly. Um, got the wiring going in, connecting to the original wiring. Um, I'll tell you about how I did that in a second. Um, I also put these. I have little heat sinks for um, a computer GPU that I had that I'm no longer using. Um, and I put those on there just for the hell of it. Uh, I wasn't getting any, any temperature issues, but I just decided I had them laying around. Why not? Um, another thing I did is uh, mount. Here's the GPS mount here. Um, I bought this separately. I bought my NASA before the GPS module was out, so I had to buy that um, by itself. Um, I mounted that. I wanted it also. I, you know, I really don't have anywhere else to mount it. You can see the props are right here. Um, that's really it. I could either mount on the top of the dome. That would have been a, kind of a pain in the ass, so I just kept it to uh, off to the right. Just barely peeking out here. Uh, I might cut these off later on, just so these don't aren't sticking out anywhere. I mean, there's no prop uh, collision here or anything, but I might do that. Um, I just have it mounted with the stock double-sided tape or 3M uh, sticky tape they give you. And that's on there pretty solid. Um, all my props are balanced perfectly. The rears were perfectly fine. Uh, the fronts were the ones that were really off because they use a clear plastic in the props and they add a yellow or orange um, additive coloring later. You could even see if you look at the props, you get um, weird. Uh, uh, you can't really see it in the video, but you get coloration. You can see where the, it's not evenly spaced out, the filler, whatever they use. So that makes the balance off of these. So these are balanced perfectly, so I'm not getting any vibration in the arms or anything. You, you feel the arms, you just feel the motors, you know, kind of moving. Um, no vibration back to the electronics, GPS or anything. So that's good. And that's good mounted there. Um, I think, it, I believe, from the center of gravity, my setup for the NASA is, or the GPS is 6 centimeters back, 6 centimeters this way, and then I think it's 10 up. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so I have that mounted. They give you a really long cord, which is kind of crazy, uh, being that the 
the NASA's versions of the um, GPS, the carbon fiber poles, it's kind of short where the uh, Wukong, they give you like three different sizes. Um, I probably wanted to put it a little higher, but that's fine. I just bundled it up and put it underneath here. It works fine there. Um, let's see. This goes to my shutter for my uh, camera. And this also goes to my gimbal here from the flight control. Um, I want to show you how I have these uh, ESC set up. Like I said, I didn't have to buy anything extra. I did everything with parts I had on hand. And I'm sure you have a whole lot of parts too because, uh, as you know, these the stock electronics were horrible. So, as you see, I got I have two extra motors. I got my bag of parts. I got my original flight controller. I got, I don't know how many ESCs I got in here. This one's actually working. I never even used this. This is the, um, the version 2's. I spooled this up like one time just to make sure everything worked and took them out. Because I have the NASA, so these are brand new. I got ESC, it's an upper. There's a lower. Here's another, uh, another upper. And all the, uh, servo links in there, prop caps, whatever, spacers. Um, so basically what I did is the stock electronics, the stock stuff here uses a, so I think it's a 1.5 millimeter bullet connector um, or something along those lines. Um, whereas a usual standard ESC uses about a three and a half to four, I believe. So I didn't want to have to go through and change the motors over or the connectors in the end. So what I did is I, since these are all burned out, you probably have some burned out too. Uh, I just unsoldered the uh, the connectors out of the burned out ESCs. See, there's that's uh, one, two, three. That's six right there. That's two. And then here's another one. This one was burned out, so I took them out of here. And then put those on each uh, ESC. So you can see here, the ESC wires don't have you know three to four millimeter bullet connectors that are the um, Lotus T580. Uh, 1.5 I believe and then I just soldered those on there um, shrink wrapped them to make them look a little bit professional um, no connections grounding out on each other and I basically that's each ESC and then I just have them routed into each wire and it comes off each boom so this goes to here and then goes down that boom this one goes here circles around and goes out that way and the same thing over and these are actually velcro mounted too so if I want to remove my can it's rather easy um, then the motor wiring the uh, leads they go down underneath the flight control around to the front um, the red wiring is removed because you don't need those with the uh, supplied um, voltage unit I believe as you can see that's where I have that mounted I actually need to mount that a little bit better it's on, it's on uh, velcro but it's not biting that well. Um, it holds up good enough; doesn't fall off or anything. So that's where I have that because um, that's this is the tail end of the aircraft, and this is what I'm going to be seeing most of the time, uh, taking photography, whatever. So that I can always see the status light of my quadcopter, and uh, this is where I plug in as well for my computer program. Um, the battery I use is a. 5,000 milliamp, 20C, Sky Lipo. Um, that works pretty well. I get about 16 minutes of hovering um, with no camera on there and probably a few minutes less with it. Um, that goes right up in here. Sits in there fine, plugs in. Uh, my connector is kind of weird right now. I need to switch it over to uh, Dean's, I believe. That's what I'm going to do because I have a Dean here. These are just really long and bulky. Um, I originally had two separate connections, one going to the, the flight control and then one going to the ESCs because um, the original ESCs I use, which are actually right here, this is another thing I want to go over, is that if you're going to do this, get a pair. make sure you get a pair that's, that's going to work for you because you don't want to be spending all kinds of uh, money on stuff that you're just going to not use like I did here. Uh, these are Exceed RC um, Protons, 30 amps, 
And I originally had all these set up in there. One, two, three, four. And I have a brand new one in package. Uh, another one in here. Those are about, I think they're 14 bucks a piece roughly. So out the door it was like over 60 bucks worth of uh, speed controllers that are no longer needed. So that was a waste of 60 bucks. Um, I'm going to keep them because they they're perfectly fine. So they'll work for uh, other EDFs I might get down in the future or helicopters that I have. Um, or projects, whatever, so those are still uh, useful down the road. Um, but what I ended up having to do is buy another set of ESCs. Um, there's actually a user database, um, a Google spreadsheet that the community has made that showcases um, all of the different configurations people are building and what their experiences are, if they're working, if they're not working, and that really helps out too, but um, I didn't actually see any any status of these specific ESCs that I was using. Um, I didn't see any of those on there. So, and a lot of people said they work. So, because they're clones of uh, the other uh, Hobby Wings. But uh, sure enough, after I got these ESCs, someone actually finally posted something on there because uh, these were actually under load. They wouldn't work, and they'd uh, the whole quad would flip, similar to the stock electronics. Um, so. Um, let's see what else I got here. Uh, the, uh, my camera mount. This is the, uh, has the shutter and the gimbal support. Um, my servo currently burned out the original one. It was one of these red ones. Uh, get rid of one, get rid of those because, uh, they're plastic and metal gear mixed and, uh, they can't take the load of this um, this certain camera that I'm using, so um, I just have to get a better uh, Metal Gear High Torque, something that could support the weight. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. That covers most of it. Um, oh, as also the dome. I gotta go over this. This uh, will not work with the nozzle mount in this configuration because the nozzle sits way too high compared to the stock. So this has no clearance. This thing hits. So what I did, another thing it didn't cost me any money, is um, you see here on the mounts, I have uh, these little caps. And all that is, is um, I took the stock. There's little spacers between the ESCs. They went in between here. The little white spacers, clear spacers. I took those out because I don't need them no more. I, and I had extras. And I basically s used to sit them on top here. And then put the dome on down on top of it, and that would make uh, give me enough clearance for it. But uh, it was kind of a pain, so I ended up shrink wrapping them, setting them on there, putting shrink wrap over both the post and the um, the um, spacer there, the standoff, and then shrink wrapped them down. So now they form. So now I could take them off if I really want to. I can go back to the stock with really with ease. I could just unplug everything. And uh, put the flight controller in and I'm done. Um, and then if I want to do the NASA and I need some extra clearance, just pop those on there. So I got one, two, three. I got three because from existing crashes, the uh, fourth post snapped in the uh, dome here. See that reamed out. So that goes on here. It makes a perfect clearance. It would sit like that there. And uh, that gives me the clearance. It gives a little more air uh, to get in there and cool the electronics. Um, and uh, the ESCs I'm using are uh, Hobby King Blue Series 30 amps. Um, they seem to be working pretty good. But um, that's pretty much it. I'm getting really good uh, stable performance out of it. Uh, I still need to do some gyro or gains uh, adjustments. And uh, to make it perform a little better in the wind uh, than it does now. And then also I'm getting a slight oscillation with the GPS. Um, I believe it's because uh, I have it mounted directly forward. I need to do another calibration on it. And since it's directly mounted directly forward, um, you actually have to account for magnetic north, not true north. So from my location, it's 13 degrees, uh, I believe, east that I have to mount this. So this is going to be rotated 13 degrees that way to uh, compensate for the magnetic uh, declination I guess they call it 
Um, <clears throat> so that's basically it. I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, if you want any more details, I guess I can do another video uh, per request. But that's pretty much it for now. Alright, thanks for watching.